All right, gang, in this video, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into one of our live sessions. In this session, we're gonna be talking about networking, DNS servers, VLANs, VPNs, there's a bunch of different stuff, so stay tuned. If you're looking for more live training, go in the description and apply to the Zero Tier program. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. So, uh, let me make sure I got everybody here. So, okay, I got the Winter Circle people here. I got Frank, I got Mr. Hernandez, I got Samantha, I uh, got the whole gang. Um, let me see, the Zero to Hero, uh, got Brooke, got Sandra, got uh, Roberto, got uh, Sanchez, got a bunch of people. All right, so uh, we are all good to go. All right, so today we're gonna talk about um, some network configuration stuff, right? And um, a few other things, but mostly a uh, networking configuration. So um, as always, let's get into the housekeeping stuff. So first things first, these live sessions are always uploaded uh, within 72 hours of me running my mouth, right? So this stuff is uploaded um, in 72 hours. So right now, right now, uh, make sure that um, you got access to everything that you need access to. Uh, make sure that you got access to, to this stuff, um, to the Discord, to um, the Facebook, uh, the student resources drive, um, all that stuff. So all the stuff that I just mentioned is for um, the Zero to IT Hero people and the Winter Circle people, you already got that, you already done, so you already know that. So if you got a question, wait till the end uh, of the lecture and you can put a cue in the chat um, if you want to go first, if you think it's something that's super important, um, I'll make sure that I get to you first. So Order of Presidents is um, the Zero to IT Hero program. Second, um, I'm starting on this mastermind thing. So in the next couple of weeks, it's probably going to be a bunch of people um, in here. When I say a bunch, I do mean a bunch. Um, and then last but not least, the Winter Circle people, because you guys are already done with the program and whatever questions you have, we probably can um, figure it out in our one-on-ones, right? So if you got a question, please be um, as direct as possible. Uh, remember these sessions are uh, supplemental, right? They're supplemental to uh, the stuff that's in the actual program, right? So just remember that uh, these live sessions are awesome, but uh, the bulk of your training, the bulk of your uh, information is going to be from the actual program itself, right? So um, really quickly, um today is monday you already know you got to be grateful that you woke up got to be grateful that uh, you're alive got to be grateful that you're healthy got to be grateful that you are here um, with me because i'm grateful that you guys um, are here so um if anybody um, wants to share it it's not mandatory but if anybody has a win if anybody um, has anything that they have accomplished if anybody has anything that they are proud of um now is the time to share um don't have to pick anybody um, if you want, you can uh, unmute yourself and um, you can go ahead and say whatever you have, whatever you have accomplished, whatever you are proud of. Anybody got anything? Five, four, three, two, one. Great. You guys are losers, I guess. Nobody did, nobody did anything. So let me uh, go ahead and get to the business. Oh, one thing I wanted to say for sure. Um, this is one thing I know for sure is if you guys uh, do not listen, uh, if you do not listen, uh, if you do not pay attention, you're going to fail in this program. You're going to fail the exams and you may uh, fail in life, right? You got to learn how to listen, especially in this program. If I tell you to do something, if one of the other student success coaches tell you to do something and you don't do it, you're going to fail, right? So it was a student recently that failed our first exam, right? So our first exam is kind of like a barometer, right? If you fail that exam, uh, it's kind of an indication that something didn't go right mostly you didn't listen right so um, when somebody tells you hey do this do that don't trust yourself if you could do it yourself you would already done it right all right so let's go and get into it so today let's talk a little bit about um, dns right so uh, domain name servers domain name servers or domain name service so this is super important right it basically helps you it shows you how to navigate on the internet right so the dns or without the dns it's going to be hard to navigate 
the internet. It's going to be hard to navigate any websites, any of that type of stuff. So what the DNS server does is it allows you to correlate the IP address with the website name. So itmagicky.com has an IP address attached to it. So what the DNS server is, it looks for that IP address, then it says, oh, this is what this person is looking for. It correlates, makes that match, and then boom, that website pops up. Now this takes uh, milliseconds. It happens super fast so you wouldn't even notice it, but that is the process, right? Now usually DNS needs four different servers to make this happen, right? Each one of those servers has uh, a different job, has a different thing that it is responsible for. So those four servers are going to be the recursive DNS, the root domain server, the top level domain server, and the authoritative server, right? So long story short, the recursive or recursor actually is like a, like a library, right? So it'll actually answer all of the queries, all the questions, all of the requests from the clients, right? So the recursive server pretty much has all of the websites in a library, right? And it kind of picks whichever one that you want and say, okay, which one is they looking for? Okay, this is it right here. So that's what their recursor DNS is for. Now, the uh, root domain server is actually responsible for uh, translating or matching up those IP addresses to website names, right? So we want to make sure that that's working correctly. So if you have itmaskey.com, the root domain server says, oh, this is the IP address that goes with that and it translates those two, two different things and matches up those two different things, right? Because remember, every uh, website has an IP address and if you don't have IP address, it's not going to pop up. You won't be able to actually navigate to it, right? Now, the top level domain searches for what domain are we actually on, right? So itmasterkey.com dot com is the top level domain. If it was itmasterkey.edu, edu would be the top level domain. If it was itmasterkey.com dot net, so on and so forth, right? Now, the last stop is the authoritative. So what that does is it sends back all the information that you actually need to use, right? Okay, this is what we need to use to actually bring up this website, right? So we figured out where the website was, we figured out what the top level domain was, we figured out how to translate it. Now let's actually send that back to the client so they can actually bring up the website, right? Now, with these four servers, with these four steps, you may think like, damn, this takes forever, but it doesn't, right? When you type in itmagicky.com, when you type in google.com, it just pops up, right? So these steps uh, happen super fast and usually without any intervention from you or anybody else, right? This is kind of like uh, automatic, it's kind of autopilot, right? Makes sense, good, good, good. So um, there's a couple different records that DNS keeps track of, right? So a couple different records that um, the DNS keeps track of. Uh, we're gonna talk about DHCP, which is gonna be talking about uh, IP addressing, actual uh, VLANs, right? So virtual local area networks. So um, records, uh, DHCP, and uh, VLANs. So there's a bunch of DNS servers, right? Because you have to think about how many websites are there? Uh, uh, there might be billions of websites, literally, right? If we think about all of the websites around the world. Now, uh, the DNS carries the records for each one of uh, those websites, right? Just to make sure that everything runs a little smoother, right? Because a lot more has to happen after the website pops up. And a lot of stuff needs to be uh, maintained just to make sure that nothing goes wrong, right? So let's go through... Uh, a brief overview of those records. So um, there's a couple different records that we need to be aware of. So we got A records, C name records, um, MX records, and text records, right? So A records is gonna point to the actual IP address that's gonna pop up whatever website you're looking for and whatever information you're looking for, right? So the C name will point to 
the actual domain, right? So the C name is pretty much the actual website name, right? Then you got the MX records, which uh, show what kind of email, right? What kind of email platform, what kind of email service the client is actually using. Then you got uh, text records that can have a lot of stuff. It can have general info, it can have security info, it can just have extra info. It's, you can kind of look at that as kind of like the notes, right? So you got the A record, C name record, MX records, and text records, right? So the C name records is kind of like the first thing you need to know about a domain configuration or like the hierarchy of DNS. So you can think of it as kind of like the record that's sitting at the top of the naming tree. So you just got to make sure that the C name is correct or it's going to be hard to um, find that stuff, right? So the C name record, let's keep on using itmaskey.com as your domain, right? The C name record, simply make sure that itmaskey.com knows that when you type in itmaskey.com, that's what you're looking for, right? The C name record pretty much just verifies that when we're looking for this, we need to make sure that this pops up, right? The C name, C stands for kind of local, right? Kind of local. Um, and it just makes sure that when you type in itmaskey.com, only one website pulls up, right? The website that I want to come up comes up, right? So I just want to dive a little bit deeper into that. But these are the records, right? So remember that there are four servers that got to rock out to make DNS work. And these are some of the most important records. Now there's other records uh, that may pop up, but these are the most uh, important ones that we need to be aware of. Okay. All right. So we kind of already talked about this a little bit more, but let's uh, keep on going. So the A record, the A and A record stands for address, connecting your website domain or subdomains name, right? A C name uh, ensures all registered domains point to a root domain, a record. ITMaskey.com will point to ITMaskey.com. Just make sure that there's no redirects and nothing weird happens when you pop up um, on ITMaskey.com. So these records, right? Why do we care about these records? If somebody manipulates these records or somebody hacks into your DNS server, they can manipulate this stuff, right? Instead of ITMaskey.com uh, coming up, when you go to itmaskey.com, somebody did something tricky, somebody did something weird, somebody hacked into it, it could redirect to a completely different website, right? It could redirect to itt.com, uh, it could uh, redirect to Everest College, it could redirect to uh, something crazy that your mother wouldn't want you to see, right? So just make sure that um, you understand that. Um, MX records, uh, you need to have these records configured to receive mail to your domain, right? So. Everybody on my team has a itmaskey.com email address, right? And the MX records are what are responsible to make sure that my domain has these email addresses for the team members on my team, right? So if you talk to Julia, if you talk to Judd, if you talk to Christina, it's going to say something at itmaskey.com. And that's what the MX records are for. Text records provides the ability to associate other services or sometimes your mail service to your domain. Also, like I said, you can use it for security. You can use it for notes. You can use it for um, a plethora of things. So we talked about DNS and we talked about the records that accompany those things. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, DHCP, right? So since we talked about DNS, correlates IP addresses with website names. Let's talk about how most times IP addresses are um, applied to a website or just in general on a network, right? So dynamic host configuration protocol allows a server to dynamically distribute IP addresses and configuration information to clients. So just remember, whenever we see dynamic, dynamic simply means that it happens automatically, right? If it's dynamic, it means that it happens automatic. So that's what makes it a dynamic. So it's a couple of different um, IP addresses that you can have. There's a couple of different ways that you can uh, give out these IP addresses. So one of them is um, a lease, 
most times the IP addresses are going to be on a lease. Now the lease may be for four hours, it may be for 30 minutes, it may be for a couple weeks, it may be for um, a couple days, right? Now this is the best way to do it as far as generic clients, as far as uh, things that aren't dedicated to do anything specific, right? They can have any IP address as long as the IP address is on the network, right? Now, for other things such as printers, uh, such as servers, you want those to always have the same IP address to ensure that everybody always has connectivity, right? Just to make sure if they put in their IP address, that server is going to come up, that printer is going to come up, right? Now, another thing is you got to make sure that all of the IP addresses in your network are on the same scope, right? So you want to make sure that you're not using stuff that's out of scope because you're not going to be on the network. You want to make sure that you're using stuff that's within whatever scope that you have. So if you got 100 IP addresses, that is the range and the scope of IP addresses you have. If you got 1,000 IP addresses, you have to use the IP addresses that are within that scope. So manual is static and dynamic is automatic. All right, makes sense? Good, good, good. So just remember DHCP, all it does is automatically assign IP addresses to all the devices on your network. No matter if it's Wi-Fi, doesn't matter if it's wired, doesn't matter if it's a laptop, cell phone, this is what actually gives IP addresses to your clients and to your devices. And the DHCP, if you set it up correctly, it will use the scope and only the scope of IP addresses that you put into um, the DHCP server, okay? so. This is the DHCP process. This is the process that it goes through to uh, assign IP addresses. So, you know, real simple, uh, the little uh, girl that walks around the jungle with a monkey in a backpack, Dora. That is the process for uh, DHCP, right? So dynamic host configuration protocol uses Dora at the application layer. So discover, offer, request, acknowledge. That's steps one. To four right steps one to four this is the DHCP process in a nutshell uh, very simple this is how things work this is how I got the IP address for uh, the machine I'm using this is how you got the IP address for the machine that you're using and that you're on right now right so discover DHCP client will find the server by sending DHCP discover message so basically it sends out a message to the DHCP server hey man i would like to get an ip address right then DHCP server basically sends a response saying okay you want an ip address here's the info that i have this is what i may be able to give you and then um, a request right is pretty much sent and that's the server know that the client has accept the offer like okay yeah that's cool that information will work for me then acknowledge at the end that DNS actually sends that information, actually applies that information to that client. So the IP address, the subnet mask, and the gateway, all the things that you need to get on a network, right? So this is the uh, DHCP process. So discover, offer, request, acknowledge. Real simple, um, ask the server, hey, can I have an IP address? the server says hey this is what i got what you think then um, the actual client will say okay that looks good to me and then the server will actually send it to the client or actually apply it uh, to the client right now if you got a network of 10 people 30 people 100 people 10,000 people the acp will make things a lot simpler because if you do static you will have to manually put those ip addresses into each computer into each laptop into each printer um, I've had to do this before and it is no fun right and one of the biggest things is because no matter how smart you are no matter what you got going on you are human and you will make a mistake right and in networking no two devices can have the same IP address right so you may one either assign the same IP address to to multiple devices or you may end up putting in an IP address have one number off or have one decimal point off and that 
device, that piece of equipment won't even be able to get on the network because you messed up, right? So the easiest way is to have um, the DHCP server automatically just um, assign these IP addresses, right? All right, so last but not least, we talked about servers. So let's just talk about switches, right? So um, this is a part of networking as well. So switches, long story short, actually segment a network, right? So it's segmentation within the network. So you can have physical servers, right? An actual piece of equipment that we plug stuff into, or you can have a virtual switch or a virtual LAN, right? So you have your actual local area network and you segment that with physical switches and you can further segment that with a virtual LAN, right? So um, just like anything else, just like a simulation, just like um, a virtual computer, this is a virtual LAN where you can actually put devices onto a virtual local area network, right? So you can have everything. You have printers, laptops, um, servers, everything on this virtual local area network. Now, the only thing, right? The only thing is you can have all these devices on this virtual, virtual area network, but if that switch goes down, that entire network goes down, right? So you have to have a actual switch to run the VLAN off of, right? So uh, if that VLAN is interrupted, if there's some weird stuff going on, the first place you should probably check is that actual switch, right? So if that switch goes down, all of the stuff that you have on that VLAN is gonna go down as well. That's the same thing as if you have a virtual PC, if you have um, a virtual network, all that type of stuff. Anything that's on a virtual PC, if the physical computer that that virtual PC is on goes down, then our virtual PC is gonna go down as well. It's pretty much um, the yin and the yang. That's pretty much how uh, things work, right? So a virtual local area network, we talked about DNS records, we talked about uh, what DNS is, we talked about DHCP, and we talked about the DHCP process, and we talked about virtual local area networks. Now, that is, I won't say that's all I got for you guys. I think this is the last slide. Yep, it ain't going no more. So um, that is it. As always, 30 minutes gave you uh, more information than um, a four-year degree. So um, anybody got any questions, comments, concerns, anything I should know about anything before I let you guys go say the world? Going once, going twice, Bada boom, bada bing. All right, you guys have an awesome day. Uh, if you are scheduled to take an exam, go take it. Um, if you um, are approaching that 16 week mark, you need to get it together, you need to finish it up. But remember, this program is 16 weeks long. I don't wanna hear anything uh, unless uh, you're dead or dying. I don't, I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> you got six, eight weeks to finish this up. Uh, a bunch of people did it before you, a bunch of people doing it right now. So anyway, anyway, other than that, have an awesome day and I'll see you guys in class.